everyone and welcome to Diamonds of Craft where I make things. My name is Sarah. I wanted to get this video out in May or June. Obviously that didn't happen as it's now August. Life gets in the way, life happens. This is not my full-time job. Obviously I have a full-time job and this is my hobby. This is on top of that so I have to make time for this and I've just got a lot of hobbies and things to do these days for some reason. I don't know. I decided to make fan from the new Critical Role campaign. So me and a couple of people on Instagram wanted to make the whole party. The whole D&D party. The whole Critical Role group. And their pictures and creations are coming soon. I decided to make fan because I wanted to make her. She's just... You know, she's a fawn, she's covered in flowers, she's got so many accessories, she looks beautiful. And I absolutely love her character. So that is what I'm going to do today. Let's get to it. Let's get into the video. Let's go. Okay, right to it as usual. I am using this Izzy Dawn dancer doll, which I paid an extortionate amount of money for. Well, probably not if it was a new doll, but this one was secondhand and it has seen better days. Her arms are a little squishy and it is annoying. So, time to prep as usual. Hair off, face off, trying my best to get the whole face in one go and... Kind of. <laughs> Cotton pads are great to get most of the face off all in one, but sometimes you need a cotton bud to get into those hard to reach places. Then, of course, the best part of customising, pulling all the grim hair out of the neck hole. Ugh. I took the colour off the scalp so I could repaint it afterwards, as usual. But before I do that, I need to relocate these ears. I'm going to cut them off carefully and keep them as intact as I can. So I'm sticking them down here with super glue to match the artwork a little more. Super glue worked pretty well. I decided to paint the scalp before I dealt with the holes in the head, but I did cover that with fabric and PVA and painted it the same colour. Then I decided, after I'd painted the head, that the horns could be attached by a magnet and I embedded a little magnet over the fabric that I'd painted, but under new white fabric. <laughs> also, I got a new rig for my camera, so it is an abrupt shift to a bird's eye view. And I picked up a handy tip from my friend Dolly Mixtures to put a sticker down to mark where the frame is, so thank you Lee for that. Forgive me if anything is a little shaky, it's brand new and I'm still figuring it out. Fern's hair was described by Ashley Johnson as being seafoam green, which I believe is this colour. So that's the colour of the scalp, and I had a couple of different coloured fibres that I mixed together to get the right kind. And I just keep plugging those hair bits in until it's all full up. I didn't plug the magnet parts as that area will be covered pretty nicely by the horns later. So I need to sort the body out now. I sand it all down before I chop off the legs to make fawn legs. Which is a first for me since I've never done this before. I just saw them off with my jeweler's saw and I'm trying to copy all those artists who've done this before. Some holes in lolly sticks for makeshift joints and I just glued them down with hot glue. This is so much harder than everyone makes it look and I definitely didn't make my new joints long enough because the glue got in the way of it. But it's fine, I'll make it work. I did reinforce the hot glue with epoxy glue. To cover those unsightly new bits, I used air dry clay to re-sculpt this part of the leg. Hmm. 
It'll be covered with hair later anyway, so it doesn't have to be pretty. For the horns, I rolled out some Sculpey, tapering it at one end to make a point. Then after making sure they're long enough by twisting them, I sculpted little ridges into the surface. I made three or four horns for this because it's not as easy as it seemed. These were the best set I had, so now it's time to paint them. Basic layer of paint and then I wash them with a darker brown off camera. Now I want to add some of the flowers on this before I do anything else. I bought a load of nail art flowers, both 3D and 2D, and I just stuck them on. <laughs> there were some flowers I could recreate, uh, white ones with yellow centers. It's not the exact flower, but this is just a representation at this point. So for the body, Fan is a tall lady and she is going to be getting some hips. So I sculpted a new set of boobs on for her to balance her silhouette out a little. I colour matched that as well as I could and I painted the air dry legs. Now for her face. I dusted her with some white basically to redo the paint job I took off. Izzy is a dear spirit and I am keeping that theme with this doll. I know my rendition of Fern won't look like the artwork and I think that's okay. She needs big green eyes and I actually did do these a few times because I did not know how I wanted them to look exactly more human or more fawn, so I went for a happy mix of both, big irises and even bigger pupils. I tried my hand at making the colours smoother with water, I usually just leave it as is but for some reason I fancied trying this out properly. I feel like she'd be quite natural because I just like to think Faye would be. I added in more natural makeup and then moved on to the white dots fawns usually have or that I see in artwork at least. I wanted to give her a little nose to accentuate the fawn part as well. Adding in the reflections in the eyes is always one of my favourite things to do. Then I could have added these freckles in by getting a hard brush and watered down paint to flick on, but there is always more than one way to do the same thing. And when the dots got a bit big, I pressed a cotton pad onto it to take away the excess paint and just leave an impression. I actually painted the eyelashes in this time. It was just adding water to my ink tense pencils, but it felt weird all the same.
and the horns ended up being too heavy for the magnets, which I figured would happen as they're only small magnets, so I ended up gluing them on for extra strength. Then I added freckles to her body to match. And a quick blush to parts of the body that will give the doll a little more life. Now we are going back to the days of Lady Dimitrescu and giving this girl drag queen inspired hip pads. It stops the joints from being restricted by hard clay and it worked so well before I thought I'd try it again. I just make regular shorts with these kidney bean shapes cut out to be stuffed with fluff later for volume. I sewed these onto the doll because they're not going to be removed. And this did work. It worked really well. But I also did a silly thing, and it was to add flocking to them. Now, I wanted to add the flocking to the leg parts, because some of it won't be covered by the hair, and it makes sense to do that. But I thought I'd add it to the thighs too, and well, as you can imagine, the glue hardened, and it's not soft anymore. Not to mention, I had to glue the hair on after, and that hardened it even further. So yeah, don't do that. Maybe just paint it on or use the colour fabric that matches the hair. So I used yarn as the hair just unraveled and short and glued on one by one. I also forgot to paint those little hooves so I'm doing that now. This is before I glued on even smaller pieces of yarn to make the hair transition over her hooves. Once that was all done, I gave it a little comb and a trim. I like the smooth look, but she's a fawn out in the world, so it wouldn't be perfect. Finally, onto her clothes. I had to make all the mods before her clothes so I could get them to fit right. I started with her cape. I did begin with this cloak pattern that I had but it wasn't swishy enough, so I cut another one out. I cut two, pinned them together, and sewed them together, because then there wouldn't be an inside hem, which would look awful. This fabric is pretty sheer too, so it makes sense. Then I pressed it down so it would lay flat. I cut this rectangle out for the top part so I can attach it to her easily. In the artwork, the bottom of the cape is adorned with all sorts of flowers. So I pulled out all the little flowers that I had, not necessarily the ones in the artwork but close enough. I just glued them on with Yoohoo glue in sections. Big ones first, and then filled the spaces with the smaller ones. Then I finally added the 2D flowers for more interest. I ended up adding little beads to fill in more space as well. <laughs> so her dress is going to be annoying. Um, I made the top part by gathering a rectangle in the middle and I'll be sewing this onto her directly. The dress is annoying because there's going to be no way for me to make it removable so I may as well just sew it on bit by bit. The skirt, I had no idea how to make and make it look the same as the artwork. I'm really not garment minded, so I just cut a circle skirt for the volume and cut a slip right up the front. I hemmed it with fabric glue and an iron, and someone in the community gave me this tip but I can't remember who. 
and to keep it from covering her legs up too much I put little stitches in the folds to hold them back. All of this draping would not work on doll scale, not without some cheats, so all of it has been pinned in place. I tried using Milliput this time as I'm out of epoxy sculpt these days and it's really not bad. I made some flowers, mushrooms and leaves to stick on later. So Fern has these mushrooms growing around her hooves and I will stick those on but before that she needs some moss. I just painted that on and I didn't film me sticking the mushrooms on for some reason but it's okay because we're on to accessories now. Her staff was really fun to make. Um, mine is more bendy than hers, but that's fine. I had a great time sculpting little snake heads to go on it. I love fancy staffs. This reminded me of when I made Claire's staff. Maybe cool staffs can be my thing. <laughs> I used this ball tool to get some more natural looking ridges going on. It's made of wood by the looks of things, so it shouldn't be perfect. I painted it and realized that after I'd painted it that it needed some little gnarly bits. Because there is a little lantern attached and it needs a hook, so I added those on with Milliput and they fed pretty well. I only broke them a few times. Once it was all the same colour again, I then added detail by dabbing on green moss and just giving it a little more life. Those snake eyes needed to be green and bright, so white acrylic on first before the green. Then I just adorned this with the 2D flowers that I had and job done. I made the lantern out of UV resin and mica powder. I fashioned a little box to make the basic shape and added milliput leaves to the top to finish the job. The last thing I needed to make was her sickle. Yes, I said it right this time. If anyone has been following me for a year on here, I accidentally called Bella Dimitrescu's sickle a scythe and there were a few comments pointing that out. I'm just going straight in with the silver pen here. Once all the details were painted, I glued on a little rope, which was just heavy duty upholstery thread painted green. I added those leaves onto her dress to finish her entirely, and then she's all done. And here she is, the finished product, Fen, all done. It took a very long time to do everything and I know I didn't film doing everything, like these little bunches of flowers and things like that, but sometimes you just can't film everything. 
there are things that I definitely would change about it um, because some of the things that I did were a first time situation, like her legs for example, she can't stand up by herself, which is a shame. But aside from all of the things that went wrong and how long it's taken and you know, all of the bad stuff, I think she's turned out pretty good. I'm really happy as usual, really happy with how she's turned out. She's so detailed and I have not really done something so involved. There have been a few dolls that have done that have been this involved, but not like this. This is something else. I think my favorite part is her staff. I really love the staff. The little snake heads were so much fun to sculpt. There was a lot of sculpting on this doll and yeah, I had a great time doing that. I really love sculpting. Tell me how you thought I did in the comments down below, but remember, don't be a dick. That's all I ask. If you like Critical Role, let me know who your favourite character is from any of the other campaigns, any of this campaign, any of the extra things that they do. Definitely check out everybody else um, when they come out and when they have their final products ready, I will put them in the description box below so that you will be linked to them. We're more than likely going to have a group photo and a group situation on Instagram, so watch out for that. Um, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, if you want, I think. Um, subscribe to this channel also if you want to, you don't, don't have to, it's not a requirement. You can just watch a nice video, go, oh that was nice, and then leave. It's, it doesn't bother me at all. Ring my bell if you want to be notified for <laughs> whenever it is that I end up uploading. You probably need it considering that I don't upload that often or that well, that frequently. I think we all know by now that all of my photographs are taken by Will Charlton Photography. Follow him on Instagram. You won't regret that. He's great. I will be back soon. Hopefully very, very soon. More soon than this, but you know me. My soon means anywhere from weeks to months. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I always enjoy making things and showing people the things that I make. It's it's still fun for me and I will see you on the next one bye can't trust a thing I say